Three Pints of Laughter was very kindly sponsored by All Truck and Trailer Parts UK. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Welcome, thank you for joining us as our third guest on Three Pints of Laughter. My pleasure. Uh, we haven't met before and I was thinking on the way in today, well, I wonder if we've got much in common. And then of course I realise I'm half Scottish, or at least my liver is I was going to say which half, but then it is your, your liver. Uh, and, and I'm a former goalkeeper. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. I too played for a club That's as big as Norwich. <laughs> Are you going to tell, you tell a five aside, like, a five yeah. aside club. Yeah. <laughs> well, I did say it was as big as Norwich. Oh, right, okay. Apparently, he had trials for West Ham. Oh wow! No, no, no. After, no. That's after about eight points. <clears throat> I will qualify yeah. that. I was asked yeah. to go for a trial. Okay. For West Ham, so I think I Phil Parks was a better it. choice back then. <laughs> <isn't> there, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we can't start this, this conversation without the elephant in the room being dismissed. In that you played three hundred odd times for the team. I can hardly bring myself to mention Norwich City up the road, and you are. A legend, it's fair to say, up in that city. Well, let's get it right. 300 league games, 370-odd league games, but 477 games in total. Wow. You didn't so, play that many cup games. I don't, we must have done, because that's the that's the final number, 477, uh, on Wikipedia, and that's the one we go for. Um, but you never got past the third round in the FA Cup, right? Uh, oh, we got to a couple of semi-finals, you know. We, <laughs> tr- we, tried, to, we, tried, we tried our best every now and then. But, uh, yeah, no, I was privileged to... Uh, when I, when I moved from Aberdeen in 1986, um, Norwich City just got promoted to Division One, as it was at the time, and um, they were top of the league. So I was actually joining, uh, you know, the league leaders at the time. And, what time um, of year was this? Was it, 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 was, it was before? August through to October, <laughs> and, and it ended up that season we ended up finishing fifth, yeah. which um, which was amazing, you know. So great memories of did my first an, season. Did you have an open top parade? We, <laughs> well, it was one of those days that we our open top parades were in Epping Forest um, when we stopped off after games in London to go into the local pub, and, right. then, and then we celebrated. But um, that on that day when we finished fifth in the league, um, funnily enough, we had a visit from um, a clothes um, guy the night before who was selling off holiday gear. So anyway, we were all going into our pockets. I think we just sold our FA Cup final tickets and uh, we all had a bit of cash. So we we're all buying these um, flowery T-shirts and shirts. So when we got to Epping Forest, uh, the pub, um, we went. We decided we were going to do a, an old joke. So I went in, all the boys got their, their tops on. I went into the pub and I went up to the, the bar and I said, excuse me, can I have a, a pint and seven halves, please? So anyway, they're looking at me saying, there's only me in there. So why does he want a pint and seven halves? Anyway, they um, shouted at the door, hi-ho, hi-ho. And all the lads came in on their knees, like singing hi-ho, hi-ho. So that was our celebration. That was our open top bus day in Epping. <laughs> so you, you, obviously a Scottish gentleman, you're actually from very near the Furthest north you can go, John O'Groats up that way, aren't you? Yeah, 12 miles from John O'Groats, a place called Thurzo, which is on the coastline, so you can't go any further. Um, yeah, there's a harbour there that takes uh, the ferry across to Orkney and the Shetlands. Uh-huh. And um, yeah, I was brought, well, born there, brought up there until I was about five, and then we moved to Invergordon. Uh, my dad worked with a company called Taylor Woodrow, um, helped build the Dunray nuclear reactor, okay. and then moved south, and they were building uh, the aluminium smelter. Mm-hmm. So that was that was our movement as a family, and um, yeah, there I was yeah in, into my football straight away. Uh, younger brother Alan, two years younger than me, so um, used to kick lumps out of him, and um, you know then my dad used to kick lumps out of me for yeah. <laughs> kicking lumps out of my little brother. But yeah, no, it was it was good. My, my, my dad was a, a sort of a an amateur sportsman. Um, he ran in the Highland Games, so mm-hmm. he was very athletic. Um, he played for the amateur football team in Invergordon, which I eventually ended up playing for when I was about 14. So I was mm-hmm. playing men's football when I was 14. Um, got spotted by Aberdeen. Um, went for trials with a, a guy called Eric Black. Was that always as a goalkeeper? It was, actually. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I did play outfield as well. So I was multitasking. Um, and it was one of those things when you were younger, you'd play Friday night for the uh, amateur youth team. Then you'd play Saturday morning for the school, 
Saturday afternoon for the um, for the amateur team, mm-hmm. and then Sunday morning for the local pub team, and yeah. Sunday night I'd be screaming because I'd cramp in both legs. Yeah, yeah um, so I'd be playing in goals outfield. Um, but yeah, it, look, it's just um, good memories. I've actually just sent a message to my old school teacher who used to drive us to our representative games, a guy called Mike Morris, and uh, he's 70 this weekend. So his son asked if we could do anything. He's not been very well. So I've managed to get um, a signed programme from Angus's debut against uh, Cyprus. And then he missed the Aberdeen celebrations uh, back in May. So I sent a signed programme from that as well. So uh, nice. quite nice. And me and Eric Black sent him some video messages. So um, it's nice to look back and the people that helped you mm-hmm. um, get to where you um, are. Um, that's, what Simon, that's what Simon says about me. <laughs> <laughs> one day, one day, Rodney. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, I was lucky. I had people who um, invested time in me. Um, you know, I did everything I could sporty wise. Um, I had the paper round, so I used to like run around that, get mm. a bike down to the local shop, then run around the paper round. So everything was, um, was energetic. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I was fortunate <coughs> to be spotted in the far north of Scotland. So what, uh, what age was that? When at 14, Aberdeen? at 14. I suppose that's before you had any inkling that you might do something else with your life and, you know. Work um, I think games. I was wanting to be a PE teacher was my, <clears throat> I think maybe because I fancied the lady PE teacher that I wanted to be a PE <laughs> teacher. But um, yeah, that's what I always said. I wanted to be a PE teacher. Um, but I say, you know, luckily enough that got spotted playing in the representative teams north of Scotland against mm-hmm. Aberdeen. Um, there's an old goalkeeper at Aberdeen called Bobby Clark and he happened to be at this game uh, watching it. Um, ironically, got beat 10-0. So I was in goals, got beat 10-0. You got used to all that right, though, yeah, didn't yeah, you? All right, okay, come <laughs> on. A bit early for this, a bit early to come in at that. So, but it, it, he said it could have been 20 and then that's why they invited me for a trial. Okay. Uh, me and Eric Black, who lived six miles apart, he got invited down. So our parents drove us to Aberdeen Left, left, dropped us in digs, uh, and then for like two weeks school holiday, we'd be training with uh, all the up and coming Aberdeen players. Uh, and then two years later, both of us signed on the same day at a European game against Uspes Doza, um, and Bobby Clark was playing in the game. Mm-hmm. So the man that advised Aberdeen to sign me, I was watching him play in a European Cup tie. So um, I'd say it's it's chance um you've got to be skillful as yeah. well you've got yeah. to have the skill level but it's been in the right place at the right time sometimes and i say got beat 10 nil got spotted and <laughs> you know i'm still so this, this was a tight aberdeen let's not forget we're, we're a big team weren't you in those days european football yeah yeah so so aberdeen aberdeen had just won the league hence mm-hmm. been in the european cup so alec ferguson was uh, just come to the club i think two seasons before 78 and, and then like 79 mm-hmm. 80 they won the league um and then we signed uh, so we were apprentices mm-hmm. we were cleaning willie miller alec mcleish bully garner bobby clark i used to clean their boots so you know we were as close to them as we could be we weren't in the same dressing room then we were in another dressing room but we used to have to hand them the boots in the morning, mm-hmm. make sure they were like spotless. If not, you get them chucked back at you and you'd be like scrubbing away, getting them back. But um, all part of your apprenticeship. Um, yes. And at that time, Bobby Clark got injured. And then there was another young goalkeeper called Jim Layton who sort of took over. And then it moved us all up the ladder a little bit. So mm-hmm. at 16, I was like the number two goalkeeper at uh, Aberdeen. Um, I didn't make my debut until I was 18. But, you know, I was learning all the time from, you know, Aberdeen winning in Europe, winning Scottish League, Scottish Cups, League Cups. Mm-hmm. So I, w- I was fortunate to be part of a very successful time at Aberdeen as well. So, and of course, was, I was going to say, that was with Sir Alex. No, no. That, no, that was no, after. No, no. He was only Alex then. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, yeah. Ollie, come on. Bit, Get yeah. it right, Ollie. Okay, yeah. Get it right. So yeah. it was only Alex then. Yeah. Uh, so fa- famously, uh, well, not famously, uh, Aberdeen beat Ipswich in the UEFA Cup when we we we'd won the UEFA Cup the year before. Now this might be something a bit strange to you, winning a trophy, but Ipswich Town won the UEFA Cup. <laughs> I know. I know. In 1981, and the next yeah. year we played Aberdeen in the first game, and yeah. somehow the Jocks beat us. Yeah. Well, I know because that was my first ever European bonus. I was sitting on the bench and um you've been I remember doing the sandwiches. I, 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 I was just like unbelievable. Um, you know, so yeah, we knew that Tipswich had won the year before. Um we came to Portman Road. I think 
probably September time. Uh, and then uh, no goalkeeping coaches in those days. So Jim Layton and I were warming each other up on the side of the pitch. We weren't in the goals, we were at the side of the pitch. So um, Jim had hit a shot at me and I'd parried it away to the left-hand side and the tunnel at Portman Road came out there. So I got run over and got the ball and Bobby Robson was standing in the corner watching our training session. And um, he says, yeah, that was a good save, son. Good <laughs> save. So I, I was quite happy then. I looked up and Bobby Robson, I'm thinking like, should I go and tell Fergie that he's watching our training <laughs> session or like what's what's what? But I think in those days, there was like mutual respect. Yeah. And um, Bobby used to come up to um, Pitodri to watch pre-season games because Aberdeen always used to have a, a tournament against Arsenal or West Ham or something mm-hmm. like that over, over a weekend. And you'd always see the likes of like Bobby Robson there, Ken Brown, who eventually mm-hmm. became my manager. He'd be up watching West Ham because mm-hmm. the next West Ham player. So again, like I was lucky enough to rub shoulders with the, these type of people back then. Um, but you know, the second leg at Pitodri, um, I think the first leg was one-one. Mm-hmm. I think at um, Portman Road, second leg at Pitodri. Um, well, we wouldn't have lost because I don't know if you know, but we've never lost at home in Europe. Yeah, all right, okay, yeah. sorry. We, we yeah. have played uh, quite a few games. Uh, okay, yeah. in, in Europe, yeah. right? Okay, well done, well done. Yeah. But Bar- you, you certainly, yeah, Real Madrid, yeah, yeah. Sure Aberdeen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you certainly lost the second leg because yes. um, the guy called Peter Weir. Yeah. And um, I think he gave Mick Mills. Uh, twisted blood or twisted veins that night. He, he just kept yeah. weaving past him and cut inside and put a shot past Paul Cooper. And I think to this very day, um, Mickey Mill still receives uh, postcards from Aberdeen fans. <laughs> just to say, you know, remember that night, Peter Weir. And um, on occasion, when I've met Mickey in uh, Villa Sol, where we played golf, yeah. managed to take 20 euros off him as well that night. Um, <laughs> and then at Portman Road, when he was doing a commentary, I did a selfie and I sent it back to uh, the Gothenburg greats, as we call them, uh, WhatsApp group, just to say that Mickey Mills sends his regards to his well. So, <laughs> okay. so it was a bit of banter. Um, and as I say, I know, and, and coming into the Greyhound today, seeing all the pictures on the wall, I mean, I, I remember mm. that cup win. Um, not, <coughs> not because it was Ipswich, because which, it was, which one, the FA Cup or the UEFA Cup? I'm looking at UEFA Cup because oh, I had that okay. Saint Etienne shirt. That was one of my favourite shirts in the mm-hmm. in the day. So I I had that shirt. So um, but yeah, I I remember those days. Um, Alan Brazil, who I've been fortunate enough to meet in many occasions. Paul mm-hmm. Mariner, um, Eric Gates, um, big Alan Hunter, um, Russell Osman, who I know now as well, mm-hmm. and and one of my favourite goalkeepers, although. He's not as tall as me. Was Paul Cooper? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I used to love his, I don't know, antics or his tactics. I think his tactics for a penalty kick. Oh, he's mm-hmm. he's he used brilliant. To, he used to like, yeah. you know, he sort of show a big space on one side, look like he's going that yeah. way. And and I, you know, <coughs> I, and I've met Paul since as well, mm. uh, well a couple of years ago in, in uh, Villa Sol. So um, yeah, so I used to love football. Yeah. And, and, it pains me to say that I used to like Ipswich Town back uh, then. Even oh, come though on, I didn't let, know why don't we you just gonna... admit it? Actually, it's probably a good time. So <laughs> you, you might. You look a bit chilly. Do you want to put that? On? Oh my God! Here we go. Just give, you can have that on for a couple of minutes. Oh, so on. There we go. Let me get my Norwich badge out as well. <laughs> just to make sure. So here we go. I knew something was going to come, but I didn't know what. So I better have a drink. As that, well. that probably stinks of Guinness and sweat. Yeah, sorry, that's been around that's the country. Been away games. Yeah. I do watch you on uh, social media, so uh, oh, I, follow, I follow all. And you, you still agreed to come on this show? That's, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I love it how on a hot summer's day. Um, you have these scars wrapped around your neck. And, like, and I'm thinking, like, these guys are mad. <laughs> well, we're definitely mad. Yeah, but, these guys yeah. are mad. So at that time when you, you're at Aberdeen, and obviously we were just talking about these games against Ipswich. Yeah. I mean, yeah, who, who you would never have thought that what a big part East Anglian football and even Ipswich was mm-hmm. to have in your career moving forward. Yeah, so no. in, in 86, you got your move to Norwich. How did that come about, that move? Yeah, well, obviously, after that season, the 82 season, Aberdeen went on to win the European Cup Winners' Cup, yeah. beat Real Madrid in the final. So, like Ipswich Town, uh, we're still celebrating events 40-odd years ago. Um, so, um, <laughs> we, we got to cling on to we, it. We, yeah, we, had a, we, we had got a promoted reunion. last year, I don't know if you know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah. Celebrate that in 40 yeah. years' time. <laughs> uh, we've only just stopped. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was fortunate enough to be part of that squad again. And, and, and look, I, I was very fortunate. Alec Ferguson was the manager. Um, I, Jim Layton was Scotland's number one goalkeeper. And I was um, Scotland's under-21 goalkeeper. So, you know, Two, two of the best goalkeepers in the country. 
fighting out for the number one spot. And I say, we didn't have goalkeeping coaches there, so we had to motivate ourselves. I had to motivate Jim. Jim had to motivate me as, as a backup. Um, so we did that. And every now and then, Fergie used to give Jim a kick out the backside and put me in the team. Um, if he'd let a bad goal in or something like that, he put mm -hmm. me in the game after. And, it, you know, again, his training perked up the week after. And maybe I got two games on the trot. That was nothing to do with you babysitting his kids and it was a way of paying you. That's a babysit Alec Bergson's kids. So uh, the story is I babysat more times than I played for Aberdeen. You didn't drop them, <laughs> ever, did you? Uh, no, well, I'll tell you what, three boys, um, Jason and Darren. Darren, obviously, yes. is uh, manager at Pete, Peterborough. And Mark, who was very sensible, who's gone on to be a very successful businessman. Um, yeah, so it, it, on a Saturday after a game, um, we'd be sweeping the dressing room and getting clear. And then you'd hear this, uh, Alex's feet coming up the corridor and like, all the lads would disappear, hide in cupboards mm. and like, under benches and that. And they all knew that he was coming up for his babysitter. And I'd be standing there, like, sweeping it, big gullible <laughs> high window, like, oh, big man, you will be sitting for, you, for me tonight. I'll pick you up from your digs at six o'clock. So anyway, picked me up from my digs, um, drove me back over to his house. Um, Kathy, his wife, had made these sandwiches mm -hmm. um, for, for me and the kids. And um, they'd go, right, we'll see you later on. And, did did uh, he pay well? He paid well, he paid well. So his story, his side of the story is um, that I used to eat the kids' sandwiches as well. So, I that, so you that, used to eat the kids. I, well, yeah. Well, the kids used to eat themselves. They used to go out and play football. I think like, because I let them have a bit of a free reign. Football was always like sort of good, good way of tiring them out, yes. get them out, tire them up, and then get them in. And uh, they won a game of snooker in Alex's snooker room. Anyway, five minutes later, they were hitting each other over the head with these snooker cues. So I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. press ups, like you know. So I'd be yeah. like sort of giving them all this. Anyway, they they respected that and then got them off to bed. Um, I'd watch sports scene. Alex would come in sort of half eleven. I think the boys been okay. Yeah, they've been brilliant. Yeah, no, no problems tonight. Smash snooker cues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next morning, have my breakfast, and then he'd drive me back with the digs. I'd read papers with him on a Sunday morning in his house, and he gave me twenty quid. So like. Well, Man 1996 was my testimonial year, so I invited, well, Man United came and played in the game, so Fergie had told the story, he says, oh yeah, you need to know everything about him, he said he was always good, he said he used to come and babysit on a Saturday night, never used to go out on a Saturday night, and he used to eat sandwages and I used to pay him £20, and I, I sort of came in in the video afterwards and said, yeah, but you don't know what I did on a Sunday night with a 20 quid, <laughs> so it was like two drinks for the price of one and Mr G's in, in Aberdeen, so it was like, hey, hey, but yeah, no, so yeah, those things are part of memories and yes. um, I was saying to Ollie when he picked me up from the station earlier that I, I played in Sir Alex's golf day in Cheshire a couple of weeks ago and he still remembers it mm -hmm. and he was still telling stories about those days. It's because you hit the clubhouse. <laughs> 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 but you know, I, I, you know, and I was lucky enough to be able to phone him up and say can you take a team to play in my testimonial match. Um, I went round to his offices and got a signed shirt recently so mm -hmm. I, I'm very fortunate I've got those type of relationships with um, special people. Mm -hmm. I always find it interesting listening to the Man United players, you know, your Rio Ferdinands, your Roy Keane's, Paul Scholes, about what an amazing manager he was. Was yeah. he, Was he? did you know that at the time it, it, when I, he played at Aberdeen? Yeah, I think he was go... building up to what he became, yeah. he building up to it because he, he, he wouldn't accept anything um, less than 100%. Um, he wouldn't accept like back-to-back -back defeats. You know, you had to win. And the, the big thing in Scotland was to... So it's a bit, a bit different when you went to Norwich then, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it, it went well sometimes at Norwich as well. But so. his, his big thing was um, breaking the, um, the hold that uh, Rangers and Celtic had mm. on Scottish football. And then for Aberdeen to sort of... Aberdeen were a team that used to win cups and used to come in and, and like win a League Cup or a, an FA Cup every now and then. But... From 80 to 86, when he was there, they consistently won. And mm -hmm. then they won in Europe, obviously, a couple of times. They beat mm -hmm. Hamburg in the Super Cup as well. Um, you know, and then I got to a stage where I, kn I knew I needed to play first-team football. He asked me to stay for one more season, and then he'd help me find a club. Mm -hmm. And um, he was true to his word. You know, I'd, I'd played like a couple of games at the end of one season and I was in the epic, uh, the semi-final team against uh, Hibs at Dundee. Made a couple of great saves early in the game and then we won 3-0. 
came in at the end of the game and he's shouting at everybody and he, went, he pointed at me and he says, you won us the cup today, son. And this was the <laughs> semi-final. So we still had a, a, yeah. like a final to play. Anyway, he dropped me the day before the, the <laughs> final to put Jim Layton back in <clears throat> because if you remember back then, unfortunately, Jock Steen passed away, the Scotland manager. Alec took over the mantle as Scotland manager in 86 and Jim Layton was Scotland's number one goalkeeper. So he needed to play him in a game before they went to the World Cup. Yeah, so I accepted it, it and he says, don't worry, I'll find your club. And yeah. he was true to his word, he did. So that, of course, was Norwich. Was anyone else circling around you at the time? That Rangers was the or? other one. Um, and I thought, <laughs> there's a little story that goes about this one. So I went away, he said to me, look, Rangers um, are very interested. Walter Smith was my under 21 manager with Scotland. He was caretaker at Rangers mm -hmm. uh, just before Graham Souness was about to come in. So he said to me, Walter wants you to go to Rangers. So I said, oh, brilliant, right. I went on holiday to Greece. Anyway, get down to the paper shop in the morning, open up the Scottish Daily Record. Um, Rangers interested in signing Peter Shilton. <laughs> I thought it was me. So anyway, a bottle of Uzo, poof, on the beach. Uh, waking up next morning, um, go to the paper shop again, open up. Oh, Rangers have signed Chris Woods. I'm like, oof, bottle of Uzo, poof. There's no mobile phones, I couldn't oh, so phone Chris him. Woods was at Norwich. Chris was Woods was at Norwich yeah. and then went to Rangers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay. the, that, so he sucks. said he'd find me a club. <clears throat> yeah. And I did tell you about Ken Brown coming to mm. Aberdeen to watch yeah. games and that. So the next person he phoned after um, after that was Ken Brown. Yeah. And he says, I've got top goalkeeper for you there. And um, who was that? Ken, yeah, because Ken, <laughs> Ken, Ken said, well, Jim Layton coming down or something like that. So, so, uh, so yeah, so he, he recommended that, um, that Ken sign me. And uh, Mel Machen came to watch me in one game. Mel Machen was Ken's mm. assistant, came to watch me in one game. Um, went away saying, Well, I don't know. Um, what, it, where it is? Alawa. I yeah, don't know where he is. He said, he said, he looked good. He looked good, big blonde hair, six foot odd. Um, I never seen him make a save, but he was brilliant in the warm up. So, but I knew he was there watching me in the warm up, so yeah. I was brilliant in the warm up. Yeah. And then that got me my move to, uh, to Norwich. Had you. All joking aside, had, did you know much about Norwich at the time? Um, one of my first, one of my first things I said was, "Where's Norwich?" Yeah. So we still say. But, that. <laughs> but obviously, the big thing I knew about Norwich was um, they had six Justin, fingers. Just <laughs> <laughs> four and a half. Okay. <laughs> uh, was the um, Justin Fashioner goal against Liverpool? Yeah. Yes. What which a was just, he a, was. just a just a few yeah. years before that. So yeah. that was always shown, wasn't it? In Norwich mm. City, green yeah. and yellow. Well, uh, Chris, sorry, that made Chris me, that almost made me girls. feel a bit have sick. I, have, I, have I done my time in this yeah, year? Yeah, 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 you can take it But he, um, <laughs> you know, so, as I said, Errol, I mean, coming into a side like Norwich, who'd just been promoted, and who knows, I, dare I say this, that Ipswich Town might find the same thing. Momentum is there. So mm, Norwich yeah, won absolutely. Division 1, which was the old championship. Sorry, Division 2, which was the, the championship now. And then we went on that sort of momentum run and got into the top six and stayed there most of the season mm. so good luck m <laughs> momentum is massive isn't yeah. it i remember being down here when the year i can't remember how norwich got promoted they beat us 5-1 was it yeah. you see that again i, I was there yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 honestly he even honestly, stayed to the end yeah it, yeah it was like men against boys yeah, yeah. uh it, it was just totally different they were so good yeah and then oh, oh, they obviously went up and did all right. It was very hard yeah. to take that night, as you can imagine. Yeah. But and who knows? I'd say that's, that's the great thing about football yeah. is you don't know until, you know, you've got your fixture list out now. Mm. Um, I've said to Ollie as well, Norwich have got quite a nice little starting uh, run of games. So, mm -hmm. again, your momentum could be that that gets you into, you know, a good position and then mm -hmm. your confidence builds from there. Mm -hmm. So, hopefully you've got all the hard games in the first six. <laughs> <and everybody. laughs> We'd like to thank all of our sponsors, without whom none of this could be possible. Uh, firstly, to our main sponsors, All Truck and Trailer Parts UK. And also to Longfields Insurance, specialising in haulage and all things commercial. And finally, to Hudson Signs, where you can get the best signage and workwear for your business. I, the league. I do think there's a lot of confidence locally about the Norwich games yeah. this year, because we do have a lot of momentum. Um, yeah. And I think, I dare to say, I think we want it more. All right. I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do. I've, you know, the, uh, I've, my, I've said to my wife, if we beat Norwich, yeah. I'll be on the train to London and then I'm going to end up in <laughs> Vegas. You're not going to see me for a week. So you, you know? think yeah. if we put 11 Ipswich Town supporters on the pitch against yeah. Ipswich and 11 Norwich City supporters, you'd beat them? 
Well, I don't think it'll be a football game. Might something else. <laughs> but, yeah. Who no, knows? That, Who that, knows? That, but all Joker is brilliant to have it back. Yeah, yeah. Isn't yeah, it? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Sure. I mean, that, that rivalry. I mean, people outside of East Anglia sort of mock the fact we all big it up as a, as a huge local derby. They say, well, it's not your yeah, Birmingham Villa or it's not... 40 miles apart. You know, it's not Rangers yeah. Celtic. But yeah. actually, the, for the supporters, yeah. it is a very high-tension yeah. game, isn't it? What, yeah. what was it like as a player, though, playing in those... those well, I mean, it, 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 it was tension. It was um, rivalry. Um, there what, was... what was your first one? Do you remember? Ooh, so I uh, signed in 86, so I would have been... I would have been I mean, you'd have lost, but I just wonder if No, <laughs> no, we, we might have done, actually. We might have lost. I'm just trying to think because Ipswich were in a different division than us when we back then, weren't they? they weren't. We, we were in the old Division yeah. 1 and yeah. now the Championship. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, we went up in 92. To be fair, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, there's only a couple of Derby games I remember. That, that, I yeah, don't think I, we I, would I have played you till 92. I'm yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So yeah. 92, 92, 92, 92 was when Neil Kawanya. Thompson and Kawamia yeah, scored. Kawanya. I nearly fell out the window at the pub yeah. down the road for like, celebrating. Because <laughs> you're watching on the cellar. Yeah, because yeah, oh, so couldn't get a ticket. Couldn't get a ticket. It's a nightmare. Because Norwich is sold out again. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah probably. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, so that, I, that's what I was trying to remember. I think it was 92, and that was. That was one of the um, spanners in our season because yeah. we were sitting mm. second or third, yeah. might even been top at the time. And um, after that game, we went on a bad run over yeah. Christmas. I think that was the, the week before Christmas. Um, and I always remember, like you know, Thompson, Tom or Neil, play golf for them as well now. So mm. uh, smacking one in across me, yeah. and uh, I could hear a little yelp from somebody. Yeah. And then I'll like, run away to the to the Ipswich fans, but yeah, there was that one, and then there was the one when um, Kevin Lynch was the, the referee. Oh yeah, um, was that when Walk- Clive Thompson? Yeah, uh, which was the one where Walkie took out Darren Eady, and he said, "I tackled him in the first half, got sent off in the second. That, that, it was, that, it was that might have been. It might have been after that because um, yeah. the Thompson one, because I I felt that he dived. Right, yeah. And was quite aggressive towards him. Okay. And, I can't um, imagine that with you. And it all kicked it all kicked off. So so I'd started off this little melee and then looked over to my left hand side and the linesman wasn't quite standing because the referee gave a penalty. That's right, yeah, they changed And it, yeah. um the ref uh, the linesman wasn't quite standing in the right position. He should have come to the off the pitch and like waiting for the penalty kick to be taken, but he was standing sort of just inside the line for the eighteen yard box. So in front of all the Ipswich Town fans as well. So anyway, I've decided to run over to the linesman after causing all this little fracas here. Yeah. Run over to the linesman. He says, how come you've not run like down to the line? He says, um, um, it's offside. But I didn't put my flag up. <laughs> Did he say it? Yeah. So anyway, I, I'm getting booed by all the Ipswich fans because yeah. I've obviously come over to, like, to, to see what's his... Um, and I, I've run back to Kevin Lynch. He says, Kevin, you better go and speak to your linesman because he said it's offside. So anyway, Kevin's gone running over and they've done the old side away from the Ipswich yeah. Town uh, fans. And anyway, <coughs> uh, Kevin just said, right, OK, he blew his whistle, he pointed and he ran away as quickly as he could because he knew he was going to get mm. absolutely abused. And that, 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 I don't know whether that kicked off the um, the Johnny Warwick situation with Darren Eady. Yeah. But um, yeah, we won 2-1 that what, day. What was it? You know, obviously there's rivalry with, rivalry with the fans and everything. With the yeah. players, what was it like? No, so uh, we were I talking now about, we're talking about the charity work and um, obviously when I lost my, my daughter Francesca uh, back in 92, um, we did a lot of fundraising events, but the best, some of the best people that helped me were the Ipswich Town players. Yeah. So we had like golf days, we had bowling nights, different things like that. So I mentioned Tom Thompson and uh, Kiwanya there. Simon Milton, Matt Holland, mm. um, um, David Linnigan. Yeah. So, so you know, mm-hmm. the support I had from like the Ipswich Town lads was was incredible. Um, and so, yeah, we were. I wouldn't say we were friends, but we would do things together. We'd mix and play mm-hmm. on a golf day, or like you know, and you know, Milt to this day is. Yeah. Still one of my best friends in uh, in East Anglia because he he nearly so, signed for Norwich, didn't he? Yeah. I don't know because yeah, he's a he's a border man, yeah. isn't he? He's a they, they wanted him. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. He so was very yeah. Close. a bit like Ian Crook. Yeah, that, that was Crook, the story. Wasn't it? Yeah. I think it was that Ian Crook scarf. That he, <laughs> yeah. he, he was he pictured had, in a shirt. He, he had it. He had it on. Yeah. He had it on one day, and then the next day he was back in the Norwich. He was, yeah. yeah. So crooky. Yeah. Funny enough, know. he got booed next time. Yeah, I think I think it's fair to say, you know, down down the years there are some 
ex Norwich players who we absolutely well, hate's not the right word as fans, you know. So oh, you can well, think yeah, what it's... Darren Huckabee. You can't name them, but yeah, I yeah, can. Darren, I'll, I'll tell Huck. Don't worry, I'll see Hux. Hux, but, Hux will worry about that. But, but, He'd love that. But Hux. you actually, when you mention you to Ipswich fans, yeah, kind of have a almost like a soft spot. Well, I, I always refer to Gunny as our favourite budget. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> That's it. Well, yeah, let, let's talk about one of the reasons that might have been because yeah. there's that famous goal at Porton Road, yeah. which was an own goal. Which and goal was talk, that? Talk us through it, Brian. What happened? Well, um, if you look at the um, before the game, I mean, Ipswich had always been renowned for having one of the best pitches in, in English football. Yes. Like, was it Alan Ferguson? Yes. The, um, yeah. Scottish groundsman. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he went on to work at Wembley. Used to it? keep it, used to keep it pristine. It used to be amazing. So this day, I, think, I can't remember what day was it. April? Was that, I mean, you, yeah, you probably, you probably got a tattoo. It'll be <laughs> a tattoo with a date on or something like that. You'll uh, find out at the lunch later. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> and um, so we walked out on the pitch. We're like, what? what's this? Pit? What's this all about? Like, rats in the penalty box and all sorts. I'm saying, right, lads, no pass backs in the middle of the goals today. Everything wide. Everything's got to go wide. Everything's got to go wide. No pass backs in the middle of the goals. How many times did I say that? I've told you enough <laughs> times. I've told them more times. Anyway, getting to, I think we were 1 1 at the time. And, um, Near the end of the game, wasn't it? It was getting towards the end of the game. And um, so I don't blame Robert Ullerton so much. I always start blaming Mike Milligan mm -hmm. because he was the one that passed it back Put him under to pressure. Robbie Ullerton, who then looked and thought, oh, I'll just right. pass it straight back to Gunny. And anyway, Gunny's thinking, right, I'm going to smash it up to the other end and get into a stride. And I must admit, it's probably the biggest swipe of a, a football I've ever tried. And I think there was one bounce and then it hit another bounce and then it went over me at knee high. So I know what these cricketers are feeling now when they miss yes, the ball yeah. and all that. So, so yeah, and then the fact it was in the back of the net, I was like, and there's that famous picture yep. down like yeah. that. Like, I, I was in the main stand that day. Yeah. The Brucey, I, I, Brucey I, type picture. Um, I can't even remember if I went in. <laughs> I think James Schoolcroft went in and got the ball out of the back of the net. He, he, he seems to claim that he put me off when he was, <laughs> he was running through. Um, but yeah, I always blame Mike Mulligan on it. Robbie Ullathorne, as, again, his face was a picture. Oh, he look, he's looking, shaking he's looking head, at the bench. He? Yeah. By the way, Rob, how many times did I tell you before the game, <laughs> do not pass it in the middle of the goals because that could happen, yeah. and it did. Um, but I believe um, that that goal went on to win accolades. Yeah. Um, that goal of the decade or something like that, was it? And you, you were yeah. celebrating it like that. And oh, it's my top, the, one of my top favourite moments the, ever. Uh, was that with the Gary, Gary Megson own goal? Oh, yeah. that was a cracker as well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. in the back yeah. of the net. Um, after the, um, the Olothorn OG, um, Anglia Television came, they asked to, to do something with me. And I said, yeah, no problem. They were like, what? They were surprised. That I, I said, well, if you want me, I'm in the swimming pool with the kids. So, that, well, uh, Melissa at the time. So they came and did an interview, blah, blah, blah. I can't remember what was said. Anyway, they went to Ipswich. And they got all these kids to reenact it in a park. That phoenix from the flames. Yeah, yeah. and it was like there was like sort of this guy says, "Yeah, I never used to like Brian Gunn until that goal went in, but I think he's top man now." <laughs> <laughs> when when so, you've watched when you've watched it, which right, you've come watched a few yeah. games in director's box, have you? Yeah, do, yeah. Do you do you get any grief? No, no, no. no. Um, I've actually headed the ball in the Ipswich Town director's it? box. It was funny that, that Steve Bruce and his wife Janet Tony Spearing was their ex teammates. Uh, and the ball came into uh, the director's box and everyone sort of ducked and I, I just boofed it. Yeah. And then I get a telephone call from Rob Chandler, who's up in the control yeah. uh, room. Like he does all the radio stuff, doesn't he? He does all the uh, microphone stuff. He says, did you head that? <laughs> I, said, I said, yeah, it was me. Yeah, so, so I've been in the director's box, headed it. Um, I've been to, I came with Angus yeah. uh, to watch Inter Milan. Yeah. So we managed to get a couple of tickets um, for that game. Um, when that they was, played an, that was another European game we didn't another, lose. Yeah. Another European mm -hmm. game. Yeah. So that was that was good because um, we wanted to see... Angus was like infatuated by Imri, the little yeah, mid, yeah. Uh, Turkish mm -hmm. midfield player. So we went and watched that game. Um, what else did I come back? I came, I, 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 was, I came down... I came through for a Man United game um, when you used to have that white ball with the red squares on it. Mm -hmm. So that must have been like sort of like 87, 88. Well, Ted, when we had Terry on this podcast and he was saying that each club had their own balls. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. At, yeah. at some stage, yeah. 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 I, I think Mitre had different colours for right. different ball efforts. So if it was mm. Norwich, it was green, yeah. yellow, Victor, it's blue, yeah. white, and red. So, so yeah, so yeah, look, I, I come down to Ipswich. I mean, I suppose the best thing about coming to Ipswich is you can get the train out. Yeah. Away, yeah. <laughs> I'll have to do well, that now. later on. I hope it's not a, a <laughs> well, you and I went. You and I actually went to watch Burnley oh, yes, last did, year, yeah. and you, yeah. did, you did tell me that you've got a soft spot for Ipswich. Yeah. And, and now it's live on. So, oh, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> was I not supposed to say? That? <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought I thought that was that was good that you came. Out. Obviously, we met before that, and I've got I've got good people around the the country that you can get a. A ticket from every yeah. now and then. I mm. thought, well, you boys wanted to come to the game. You were up there, and um, we were looked after. Yeah, no, was it was brilliant. Nice, it was brilliant. It? But you're 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 kind of a football agent, sort of. Yes, um, um, I'm, I know I'm, you look I'm, after Jack Butland, don't you, and uh, amongst yeah. others. Yeah, so Jack uh, Angus, um, who's, who's also my son, um, Daniel Backman, who's at Watford, um, Aston Oxborough, who's at Motherwell. So you know, some of the lads mm -hmm. look after. There's a couple of young goalkeepers coming through just now. Um, but it gives me an opportunity to go and watch some. Um, I, I tend not to do the agency side for that. I tend to do more of the mentoring side. But yeah. because of the rules and regulations now in the uh, with the FA, you have to have your license um, mm. if you're involved in any part of um, you know a footballer's development and career. Um, obviously, I speak to clubs when um, opportunities come up, like like Rangers for, for Jack Butland. Uh, and that's fantastic that we managed to get um, a goalkeeper who has been a top young goalkeeper in his time, possibly England's best goalkeeper, had an injury, got his fitness back, but now needs to regain that total confidence. And there's no reason he can't become England's goalkeeper again. He's, he's the same age as Jordan Pickford. Yeah. So I, I, I'm looking forward to going to watch Rangers this season. Um, obviously, I'm still an Aberdeen fan, so that's, I've got to keep my allegiances um, tame. Um, Watford, uh, and then obviously I, I watch Norwich City, so I'm hoping that I get a, an invite to the Derby game at Ipswich. I know I know someone who's got a couple of tickets, so I'm hoping. Oh, that we'll invite you. Don't worry. Well, yeah. Come with us. He's going to oh, keep great. a couple. You can come with us in the north. Stand. We'll do that scarf again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, can I wear my yellow and green yeah. scarf? Or will I put, no, put I this one on? I'm advise strongly it. advised not to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to touch on another another reason which, which you've gone down in Ipswich Town folklore was because uh, you 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 were at Norwich manager for shall we say a short time, let's yeah. be kind. Yeah. But there was a famous game. It was the first game of the season. Let's set the scene. Norwich yeah. are being relegated, correct? Down yes, to that's the right. Yeah, I, I was manager when we got relegated. I took over in the January okay, uh, from yeah. Glen Roder. Uh, we were sitting in the bottom two at the time. Um, and I think over that, I think I probably had 19 games in charge. Mm -hmm. uh, a very short transfer window to try and get some players in. Uh, but one of my best signings uh, was a guy called Alan Lee. Mm -hmm. and um, you know he came up he wasn't worried about the rivalry and he came up and played and, and gave us everything um, and unfortunately it, we got relegated on the last day of the season so we managed to sort of hang in there um, injuries referees decisions I would say it's a referee's whistle or the width of a post or something like that but at the end of the season um, if you get relegated you deserve to get relegated the table doesn't, doesn't yeah. lie it doesn't lie uh, but I was given the opportunity to stay on as manager. Um, I signed six players with Neil Doncaster and then I signed another six players with David McNally, the new chief exec, when he came in. So we had a brand new squad. Um, we had an excellent pre-season. So we went up to Scotland, to St Andrews. So um, Ollie's obviously played St Andrews. He played many top golf courses <laughs> in the world, but St Andrews being like one of the I, top ones. I so played as we St were Andrews, but the, the ball ended up somewhere else. <laughs> <on another one. laughs> as we were driving up to uh, um, the, our accommodation, I said, right, lads, see that big hotel over there, the old course hotel? If we'd been in the championship, we'd have been staying in there. But we got relegated, so we were staying in university halls of residence. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I promise you, if we get promoted, we'll be staying in there next year. So that was my little sort of incentive talk going up to the pre-season camp. Anyway, we had a great pre-season, unbeaten, you know, beat the likes of Wigan, Crystal Palace, played a Man United team, and got through all that pretty unscathed. And then Colchester at home, first game of the season, 28,000, full house. And um, we were 
Well, I, t I tell you what, we were like we're Real Madrid. for the first two minutes. We were Real Madrid for 10 minutes and then we're real shite after that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, final down at half time. Um, obviously, I'd learned a few things of different managers. So, um, this was Alec Ferguson mode. So, I came into the dressing room, looked around. First thing I picked up was a bottle of suntan lotion, which Gary Docker used to like rub on the top of his bomb. So, it's fun, sun factor 50. So, I got this, said, like, what, what's, what's, what's wrong? This is like Wes Houlihan, fittest man. At the mm -hmm. club says we're tired. <laughs> like smashed it off the wall above his head, and all this suntan lotion has gone all over the place <laughs> in there. He's tired. He's like the fittest man at the club because um, I ran them on the Tuesday before. Mm -hmm. So that was that was a, a petty excuse, and Wes and I laugh about it now. Um, so I told him you better go out and win the second half. You better go out and win the second half. Anyway, we've got to beat two one the second half as well. So we got to beat seven one. Um, David McNally was obviously chief exec for about six weeks, so he's, he said, it's not a good start, was it? Mm. And I said, well, no, it's not a, not a great start, no. He said, but, um, you know, we've got a couple of signings to make and, um, you know, we'll, we'll get back on it next week away at Exeter. So on the on the Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, we were playing uh, Yeovil away in the cup. Anyway, we go to Yeovil, we fly down, um, good training session, the build-up to the game, make a few changes. We win 4 0. Grant Holt, who was my summer no, signing, he's got a hat trick. Sorry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Guess, Grant about, Holt, sorry. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, another reflex action just happened. Uh, <laughs> I know what to do to upset them now. Grant Holt, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Grant Holt scored a hat trick. Um, Tom Adiemi, Academy product, he came through and, and started the game in that as well. So 4 0, thinking like, right, we're, we're back on the, mm. on, the, on, the, on the straight and narrow now. Anyway, after the games. David McNally sort of uh, these two signings are ca causing a bit of problem, so we're, we're, we're not we're not going to go through with them. I'm thinking like, wait a minute, we've already agreed with them that we were going to sign them. Um, and then I got a phone call on the Friday. Um, David wants to meet you, and um, they only told me that the board had lost confidence in me, and um, I disagreed with them. But um, that was it. Once those guys make their decision, mm. uh, there's no way back. So I had a first class ticket from Exeter Station right through to Norwich, so I had to go via London to get there. So um, first class, of course, which was very good at Norwich cool. to do that. And uh, the Buffy car was full of white wine and rosy wine, so that kept the, the trip to uh, London nice. And then by the time I got to Norwich Station, my mate picked me up, I was uh, bouncing off walls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, look, hey, it's, um, mm. it, it's I suppose, embarrassing to, to get sacked, but at the same time, you know, we gave it a good shot. And after I got told the news, I got all the players together. And I said, look, lads, do me a favour. Um, go and prove me right. Go and win the league. So, of course, the, the man who took over was the man who was managing Colchester mm. that day. Was, who then, of course, went on to... Mike Walker. <laughs> manage it <laughs> down. Manage it <laughs> down as well. So, Paul, Paul Lambert. Lambert. Yeah, yeah. 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 One what? of your favourites, wasn't he? Uh, it switch, yeah? He was uh, for He was for a bit. Yeah. There, there's a company who who makes potatoes, and they're called Lambert's Potatoes. Okay. And you see these lorries going around with these huge Lambert's Potatoes. Yeah. Everyone used to say that was the team coach. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when he was in charge. Anyway, right, yeah. yes, no, look, look, yeah, someone had to take over, and it was Paul. Um, obviously, his relationship with David McNally went back to Celtic days. Mm -hmm. So you know, I look, and he did well. The team did what I asked them to do. They went and won the league. Um, actually, in, in my negotiations with the League Managers Association and Norwich, I actually asked for the uh, the end of season bonus because mm -hmm. I knew it was going to happen. I mean, we'd, we'd accumulated a good squad. Obviously, Paul had got a couple of more players in, um, which I, I think they won the, the, the league quite easily that year. I mean, after such a long relationship with the club as a player, yeah. I mean, you, you, your, your legend status literally are in their Hall of Fame. And after such a kick in the teeth, I guess it was a kick in the teeth for you at the time. Yeah. How long did it kind of take to repair that sort of relationship? Now you can go back and everything's fine, I, I imagine. Yeah, I suppose there's an era of supporters who will always remember me as the manager. Mm. And then obviously there's another era that remember me as the player and, you know, up until the manager. Um, there's a new era that remembers you with an Ipswich scarf on, <laughs> on a podcast. I, yeah. I, hope, I hope I got no still pictures with that one. Hopefully, there's no still pictures with that one. I'm sure the screen be. grabs, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there will be. But no, um, I'm very fortunate. Um, obviously, Angus was in the academy at the time as well, and, and, and that was quite difficult for um, for him because he, he's a massive fan, massive Norwich fan. Um, 
my daughter as well. Um, some people say she played her part in a Facebook campaign to get me the manager's job. But look, they, they supported their, their dad. Um, so I think a little bit embarrassing for them as well. But we've come through all that. Mm. Um, you know, I go back to the club, the gun club. Um, you know, I speak in front of the supporters, um, you know, once or twice a season. I host the Burns Night. Mm -hmm. uh, which Delia asked me to do, and um, you know, we've got a great <laughs> again. <laughs> Not another Sorry. one, uh, Delia Grant Hall. Come on, uh, we love you all. We love you all. So, so yeah, I'm I'm fortunate that um, it's sort of come a, a, yeah. a little circle. There's a little dent in the middle, and um, now that Angus is obviously playing in the team as well, I watch them as much as I can. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've got other goalkeepers to watch as well, but predominantly, you know, I can get to see Angus as much as I can. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's it's great and. You know, uh, well, I'm looking forward to the rivalry this season yeah, that, uh, that will be created with the local derby and, you know, may the best team win. And I'm glad you mentioned Delia there because she comes in for a bit of a friendly stick, shall we say, from, yeah. from Ipswich fans. I mean, what, what's she like as a person on a professional level to deal with? Ah, oh, she's, she's fantastic um, and knowledgeable as well. Mm. Great thing about Delia is the knowledge that she has. She, and she does good mashed potato. <laughs> I, thought, the I was going to. I thought you were going to say boiled eggs. I think you're still on page two of how to cook an egg, Ollie. No, no. <laughs> I can do toast. You can do toast and eggs. Yeah. So um, you know, obviously, you know, the, the celebrity side of Delia is there. Um, that works with the football club in terms of the hospitality, the catering, um, the cookery demonstrations they put on. So there's extra income coming in from that, and good use of the stadium on non-match days. Uh, and Michael, her husband, um, you know, they put a lot into the club for a long time now. And um, obviously, there's some new shareholders come in from America, so it'll be interesting to see how mm. they connect and um, you know what what happens moving forward. They're nowhere near as good as our Americans. Well, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, won't yeah. we? It's going to be that's what happens, isn't it? The um, the Americans or the Saudis will come in, and then like, my club's bigger than your club. Yeah. But um, I suppose your capacity is bigger than our club at mm -hmm. the moment, isn't it? So we might yeah. have to build a, another stand on there just to get a few more in. But I think I think it's good for the region. Um, you know, the, the more successful the teams are, um, and I don't know from Norwich being in the Premier League a couple of times recently that the, the, the other businesses um, benefit from it. Local hotels, pubs, mm -hmm. you know, away fans travelling. Um, so you know, the, the higher up our teams are the better I mean um, this pub just go, is, is going mental now on a match day it's yeah. absolutely packed and I'm, I'm glad happening all over time. I'm glad it is. it's a lovely pub it's green and yellow so yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's, a, that's, that's more, it's more, a lot for that it's more mustard it's, I've, I've, got my, I've, got my, works. I've got my own table exactly so got number my own, one number one table number there one. so I'm quite but, happy but the success of the football club is paramount to the success of the town isn't yeah. it and it's you know Ipswich for the last 20 years you know, all town centres, I think, have gone downhill. Yeah. But Ipswich seems to have gone at quite a rapid level. Mm. And that coincides with the football team for 20... We've had no... That's why we went mental last year. Promotion from, let's be honest, League Two. We won yeah. the UEFA Cup. We won the FA yeah. Cup. We've been in the Premier League. We've been in Europe. And we're coming second in, yeah. in League third One. Yeah, yeah. In the third tier. Yeah. Because we've been so starved of success. Mm. Yeah. But the, uh, you go you go around the town now and we've sold 21,000. Yeah. All that money comes into the town, doesn't yes. it? Mm. And here, Simon's exactly right. You know, we... we We've been coming here for years. We've we've had season oh, tickets. To throw glasses <laughs> at me now. I've been on for too long. We've, we've had season tickets all the way through. So we've yeah. seen the highs and the lows, yeah. And, yeah. and we get a bit funny now because we've got to be in the pub at twelve. Yeah. When we, uh, you know, my wife doesn't like it, but you know, it's you have to get a seat. It's don't a hardship, it? Brian. But the yeah. other thing now is you'll be on telly more often as well, won't you? It's going to be yeah. Yeah. like away games. I know that you travel to to all the games, but that's the other thing that now it creates is like extra TV revenue mm -hmm. yeah. as well. You know, the, the championship obviously get paid more than League One. Mm -hmm. And and look, if you look Norwich back in two thousand and nine, ten, we're in the same yeah. spot. You know, it's taken them twenty years. Mm -hmm. 12 years, 13 years. We've got, to, we've got Ed Sheeran, of course. Oh, uh, right. Okay. I think you had the didn't you have the whistling postman or something? Yeah, that, well, he, <laughs> he, he, he didn't quite get to number one. But, you know, his it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's history is there to be to, to, to known. I'm sure we'll have a singer come out of the blue. Um, the Nimmo Twins. Have you ever yeah. been to see the Nimmo Twins? No, well, I don't, they, no. Look, you need to go and see the Nimmo Twins. They sell out at every theatre. Are they in, from Norwich? Yeah, they're from Norwich. Are they married? Are they? 
No, they're they're, they're two oh, they're two comedians. Yeah, oh, and they're not twins. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> they're related. No, no, we're, come we're, on. <laughs> do, you want, do you want to? We're coming, we're coming towards the end. Yeah. The time's flown by. It's been brilliant. But if you've got your question, you'd like to ask at the end. Are we at the end now? I, I don't think, know. I think I think it, yeah, yeah. So at the end of every podcast, okay, we we have a little thing that we ask of, um, what what would, what words would be on your epitaph or on your gravestone oh, wow. to describe yourself? Or your life. That's a great question. Could you not have Th- sent me thanks, that? Mate. Could you send me that <laughs> earlier? Uh, it was Rob Allathorn's I, fault. Well, yeah, that, that, yeah, Rob <laughs> Allathorn might get mentioned. I, I think, I, I think, uh, is, um, I always say God loves a trier. Yeah, God loves a trier, and uh, everything I've done in life, I think you, you try to do to your best ability, and. Um, that's, I think that's what people know know me as. I'm, I'm a happy chap. Um, obviously, I recover from, um, you know, the, the relegations, things like that. It's taking me a bit of time to do it, but uh, positive um, and looking forward to the future. Mm. And I think that's that's the main thing for me. I'm a granddad now. I know I don't yeah. look like one, I don't yeah. like, I know, but I'm a granddad now. So that's given me a, 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 a new bounce in my, my mm. step. Um, obviously, um, my daughter Melissa, she's a brainy girl, so you know it's good to see your children um, sort of follow on from, you know, what you've sort of given them as a mm. inspiration. Mm. So um, you know, I think that's for me. I, 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 I have obviously I've met Susan. She's lovely. You're definitely punching, <laughs> can I say? But you've got, you've got beautiful children as yeah. well. Did you did you have like a really handsome postman? <laughs> yeah, it was a wasn't a well, whistling I, postman actually I used to drink with a postman in the local pub on a Sunday his name was Ashley but he wasn't handsome and he was tiny and oh, he had grey hair oh, okay. so yeah unless my kids develop a grey head in the next yeah, like, yeah. couple of years um, it definitely wasn't the postman yeah, but <laughs> beautiful family and the only other question I wanted to ask and, and or two would be your predictions for Ipswich versus Norwich at Portman Road right. and Norwich versus Ipswich and then we can look back on it over a beer yeah. at the end of the season. The right, okay. Portman Road, I think, um, knowing that Norwich's all-action approach with David Wagner um, and, and the last time my son played at uh, Portman Road, um, Norwich won 1-0 oh. and um, I'd love to see that happen again. So is that your uh, prediction? That's my prediction. Well, that's bollocks, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I've got video of, of my son having a nice little friendly chat with the Ipswich Town fans behind the goal. After oh, that. Right. So, yeah. so I think he was kissing the badge yeah. and like, punching the air, and yeah. like there was so much like yeah, yeah, I'm sorry stuff going on. Might yeah, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> and at Carrow Road, um, I think it'll be a draw. Okay. Yeah, because you'll come and defend. No, we won't. You, you will. No, you will come no, and defend. No, you'll come and defend. Not away with so what I, I, I'll go for nil nil. Okay. Okay. Simon? It's not not great for television, mm. but so um, I, I think we'll win two 0 at home. But I think oof. away we won't defend. But I, I don't think we'll lose. I, I think it could be a one one two two. You'll come at us, but we'll go at you. It's okay. We'll have yeah. a we'll have a we'll have a drink on this. I'm gonna go two one because it it'll, it's always gonna be nervy and one one away. Okay. Okay. And I'd take that. I'd snap your hand off. You take that now. Yeah. yeah. So okay. two against one. So there you go. Yeah. Brian, thank you very much. Pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Pleasure. Cheers, Brian. Enjoyed Top it. Man. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. You can have Cheers. a drink now. Ha, 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 ha.